Welcome to another one of our Dan Factoids. In this one we'll be talking about a rather complicated question which has to do about nitrogen absorption based on the amount of gas we breathe. Keep watching. We regularly get interesting questions from divers and I want to share the following one with you. The question was that when we teach our open water scuba divers decompression theory and dive tables, should we teach them that when they work hard during a dive that nitrogen absorption also increases? Would a dive and a dive buddy with the same maximum depth and bottom time using the same dive tables have different nitrogen intake as a result of breathing more or less. In other words, if the buddy uses less air on the dive than I do, he's more fit for instance, or his buoyancy is better than mine, does it mean that I have a bigger nitrogen intake than him? This question I posed to a number of people and at this stage I don't really have an answer. Is there something you could comment on this? Fascinating question. And this has to do with a lot more than the issue of just breathing and the risk of decompression illness. First of all, we need to uh, emphasize that with the exact same dive, a same individual as well as another individual may have a variable risk of developing decompression illness from day to day and dive to dive. So there are a number of factors that are involved in addition to how hard our working has been and how deep we have breathed. Essentially though, there is a proportional washing out of inert gas with increased breathing. In other words, if an individual is breathing more heavily, on the one hand they would be exposing themselves to slightly more nitrogen, but at the same time they will also be eliminating more nitrogen when they return to the surface. And therefore the net result might be the same. Lung volumes vary greatly and therefore the amount of gas that is actually absorbed with every breath may vary greatly. But by and large the amount of exposure to nitrogen is a phenomenon related to time and pressure or depth. The net result in very basic terms is that it evens out at the end and that the margins of safety that are built into the dive tables are adequate to deal with variability. Having said that, we need to remind you that approximately half, 50% of the cases of decompression illness that do occur happen within so-called dive table or dive computer limits. So there is more at stake than simply how deep we breathe. Yes, factors such as exercising more hard, diving in water that you start off fairly warm and end cold and then have a shower and exercise or exposed to altitude, all of these things are known potential risk factors. However, the amount of breathing and the rate of breathing has not been identified specifically as an additional risk factor for decompression illness. As always, we would like to pose these things to study and we invite divers and in fact other people watching this particular episode to enter their comments and let's search deeper and go a little bit further in asking about diving risk factors and safety factors when it comes to diving. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and remember to subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you.